Good morning, everybody. Good morning. And I know I'm smiling, but today's all about freaking anger. How many of you are angry? Welcome to our regular Wednesday at 10 Facebook lives here from living well in all areas of your life, mind, body, and spirit. And this week, we're talking about anger, righteous, warranted anger. And some of us don't even realize we have anger. I have a friend who is in his 80s, and I said, how are you today? He'll go, oh, I'm fine. Life's paradise. Life's wonderful. And then we'll chat maybe in the afternoon, and I'll say to him, how are you doing? He goes, oh, it's great. Life is good. I don't stress. It's wonderful. And I said to him, um, are you human? Because as a human, we're experiencing stress, and a lot of that stress is anger. So we're going to talk about what that anger looks like, why we have it, and what we can do about it. I'm going to give you three ways to deal with this anger. But first, let's talk about why we have the anger. Now, of course, we've had anger for years within us. We were birthed with anger from our parents. Hey, good morning to you, Wendy. I'm so happy you're here. I'm going to put your comment in there. Um, so... <laughs> So let's talk about the anger we came to this planet with. The anger got passed down through generations. It really did. And we came into a very angry world. And depending on when you were born, depression time or the 80s, 90s, there's still a lot of anger about how we're showing up in the world and how the world is treating us. And it's amazing how there is so much coming out about abuse. Abuse, 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 abuse not only in females' lives, but in males' lives as well. So there's one anger there, past anger from abuse, past anger from abuse of parents, abuse of society, abuse of authoritarians. And we seem to have either therapized it, healed it, transcended it, or it's still within your cellular memory, guys. Anger stays in there. So that's one form of anger from abuse. The other form of anger is about my life sucks, right? I have not gotten what I've wanted in life. My life sucks. I thought my life was going to be better than this. I thought I was going to be happy. When I was a little kid, I dreamed of a beautiful life. I imagined it to being. I could play with sticks and stones and make a fantasy world. And I didn't even want to come in at night when it was dark. I just wanted to play, play, play. And then my world got crushed. My world got smashed by people telling me how they expected me to show up. And then what happened? In my teens, I got angry. 
I got angry. And for me, my anger was rebellion. I don't know about you guys. Tell And while you're in here, Wendy, I know you're in here. Tell me what types of anger you're experiencing, you know? And we can post now in the public, by the way. So post there. And so as a, as a teenager, I started rebelling like crazy because I didn't know how to handle my anger. I was being told by the authorities that I needed to show up in a certain way. So I was angry. I was so angry. I wanted to run away from everything and anything that represented my life. And I did. I ran away lots. <laughs> at age 14, I ran away so much. <laughs> I think you're going to laugh at this one. I ran away so much. My parents, my parents, my loving parents who didn't understand this child of imagination and wonder and intuition and special gifted child, they put me into a nunnery. Yes, in a different city. They took me out of school. They put me into a nunnery. There was five of us. One of them back then was the mayor's daughter of Ottawa. So in a nunnery. So guess what happened there? Judy got angry. Judy got angry because I was taken away from my room, all of my stuff in my room, my pets, my friends, and I got put in a nunnery with five other girls. So talk about anger. Well, I rebelled. And I got all five of us kicked out within a week. Yep, I rebelled. So I've had anger my whole life because everyone told me who I needed to be and how I needed to do it and how I needed to show up in life. So there's another anger. So not only do we come into this world with anger and then, at, you know, when we're a toddler, we're told, no, don't do that. So we start to get angry. We rebel as a teenager. So let's talk about today's, today's anger because this is huge. How about the warranted anger that's happening on the planet right now? All of this, so, I was going to say something, I won't say that word. All of the stages, the stages of anger that's happening. Wendy says, I have never, I have worked so hard, not just healing myself, but from generations. I simply don't have life, life for anger. Got it. But I'm going to tell you something, Wendy, about that because... There is a righteous anger that has formed in the past year and a half, 17 months, 24 months, whatever it is about what's happening on this planet. It's an anger that says you've taken away my rights. You're forcing something and rules and regulations on me. You're forcing me to stay away from people that I love. You're forcing me to do things I do not want to do. Right? So there is that righteous anger. And it, it's justified, guys. It really is justified because... Never before in the history of mankind have we been so, well, we have, I mean, astrologically wise, back in the days of the Jews, what happened to them is happening to us now. But this is a righteous anger about how dare you tell me I can't go out in the name of health? How dare you tell me what I need to do and how I don't need to do it? And so we'll talk about that anger at the present, but there's also anger from the past about Angry about my government. I thought they were supposed to protect us and help us. Angry about the health system. I thought they were supposed to heal us, right? And, and so the system that's here to protect us has harmed us in so many ways. Why are we paying so many taxes? Is that, is, doesn't that make you angry when half of your paycheck goes to something and somewhere else? So this is the righteous anger that we carry. And, you know, it's warranted. It's warranted because we really didn't come to this planet to be subjected to that. We really didn't. So the anger is bubbling up. Now, how it shows up in life is something else. Mm -hmm. Good morning, Natalie. How are you? We're talking about anger this morning, Natalie. And Wendy has said she's worked on healing uh, in generations of healing. But I think everyone that's, that's aware or everyone that will just say everyone that's enlightened a little bit um, is, is working on their shit. Oh, did I say shit? I can say shit, can I? I can say what I want or can I? Am I censored? Hmm, good question. So Natalie, do you, what about anger for you? Is it showing up in your life in certain ways? So I'm going to go back to these warranted and righteous angers again, how much they are present in our everyday life. And this is okay. This is okay. And I'm going to bring um, our, our guru, Angela, in. <laughs> Wendy says, holding on to anger just doesn't work. Frustration, I understand, I transmute. Exactly. And I'm going to teach you guys how to do that. How to, <laughs> Wendy says, I can say shit. <laughs> Good. Thanks, Wendy. Um, I'm going to teach you to transmute it. But, um, oh, thanks, Mary. 
Mary's here with us too. Thank you. It's a good topic. You know, and, and I just want to briefly talk about the warranted anger, even though we're trying to transmute it. And I know how to do this. I know how to do transmutation. I do. I know how to tra transcend stuff. But every day we're being bombarded with new rules and regulations that are taking away our freedoms. Justified or not, doesn't matter whether it's true or not. I'm not talking about conspiracy theories. I'm not talking about your truth, my truth. I'm talking about the generalization that we are being restricted of human rights freedoms. So that makes us angry because we are not free to do what we want to do. We're not free to travel anywhere. You know, unless we... <laughs> Never mind, I'm not going to get into that, but our freedoms have been restricted in so many places and so many situations in life. So Nally says, yep, anger with government for sure. And it, I mean, isn't it something that we were told to trust that the government, the doctors, the health system all has our best interest and would never harm us? You know, we're beginning to find out that that's not true when you read ingredients on food labels and you actually know what's in them and you kind of go... Does this make sense? So that produces an anger of what they're doing to our food. So there's constant sources of anger happening throughout the day that we are not aware of. And that's why I wanted to say, you know, my, my meme up there says recognizing different levels of anger because they're all different levels. Some of the anger, you know, for us that have been healing for years now, transcending, transmuting, have dealt with our generational anger have dealt with the things that happened in our past and the abuse. But right now we're dealing with a daily onslaught of our rights and our freedoms. And that produces a deep down soul of anger that we're not, some of us aren't aware of it because we're just like, oh, well, it'll all work out, you know, but meanwhile, our freedoms are being restricted. And we see what's happening all over the world of people either protesting, you know, either angrily or happily or silently protesting because they're, they're saying something's not right here. So when we're called to do something about it, that's when we start to understand we've got anger. So let's bring on Angela because I asked Angela, I don't know, Natalie, if you wanted to come on for a few minutes either, but, and Wendy, maybe you do too. Wendy, let me know if you want to come on and talk about three things that are present with you that you can feel frustration. Frustration is anger. Stress is anger. You know, it's all the same thing. So I'm going to bring Angela on and she's going to tell us three things that she's angry about. And then we're going to go into just three simple ways to start to release this. All right. So let me unmute Angela. Bring her in. And there she is. Good morning. Hi, Gigi. Good <laughs> afternoon to you in South yes. Africa, Miss Angela. Yes. Hi, how are you? I'm doing great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think a lot of people are. And, you know, it's um, it's something that's permeating the earth at the moment, you know. And, and you know, um, most conversations have got this undertone of anger behind them, yeah. you know. And, um, you know, I think this is a really great topic. And we have spoken about this in the past. And you asked me, what are the three things that have made me angry? Well, you know, number one, I always was angry, you know, growing up, I was angry, I was frustrated. And you must know, I lived, um, I did live through apartheid for 26 years. So, I, and a lot of people's freedoms were taken away. So um, I do understand a lot of what is going on in the world at the moment. But one of the anger issues that, that I personally um, didn't know I had was unhealed trauma. And Every time I started experiencing anger with other people, I did not actually understand where that anger came from, why I was angry. And, you know, going through the mentorship program with you, you taught me that those are from um, unhealed inner childhood wounds, you know. And um, when I started understanding my own personal anger issues and that there was so much that I actually had to heal, I actually found when I had conversations with people and, and now it's actually a lot easier because I'm not triggered as much. So mm. that level of anger is actually not there anymore. So but, Angela, what, yeah. what's one thing that angers you right now in your life? Oh, well, only one. <laughs> well, one, um, at the moment. Yes, like not one thing okay. that you feel is, is sort of present there for you about being frustrated and angry. 
I think my anger stems from a very personal level, and that's with relationships for me. I, I have struggled with certain relationships, and, you know, I think it's the expectation that one has with other people, and also understanding people are on their own journey, that they do not have the same um, outlook, beliefs as your own, and, and you can't control that. And I yeah. think it's the, the control issues that I had for many years and the expectation of other people and in trying to control what somebody else is thinking or the outcome of our relationship or problem that we have. And actually understanding that has been a way of letting go. Yeah. The minute so, something, yeah. yeah. And so I think, you know, that's what I talked about, about the expectations of relationships, whether it moves from childhood into teenagehood and even into adulthood if we haven't dealt with it. And I think that's a daily thing for a lot of people because there's so many levels of anger from the time we were born and depending on how much abuse we've had. So Wendy's saying my voice is really low. Um, Natalie and Mary, can you hear me okay? Because Wendy says she's not. So, oh, okay. okay, so now let, let's talk about a present day anger. Jeez. What's one of those angers that are happening for you? Um, I just feel really restricted. Um, I feel like it, it hasn't impacted me yet because I work from home. And so a lot of my daily life is at home. So I don't have the same restrictions that other people have. You know, whether it's from work and being forced to do things that in your sovereignty you don't feel right. And I just feel that um, people must go with what their intuition tells them about what feels right and in their sovereign being. Not because everybody else is doing it, because the anger that's coming up is against what somebody else's choices are. And, you know, I, in my family, some of my family have made choices that are separate to, to what mine are, and I've made peace with that. I don't um, try and force my, what I believe or um, how I view what's going on in the world. I don't force that on anybody anymore. Good. And, because, we'll, and, I'm, yes. and I'm going to deal with that about how to do yes. that. So there's a yes. second thing about your rights and freedoms being taken yes. away. And do you have yes. a third one, or is it sort of all tied in together? Well... You know, my anger stems from when, number one, you see injustice. You know, that that anger is, is very prevalent. But anger for me comes from really going inside and seeing what is frustrating me, what is stressing me out. And I think it starts on a very personal level because then it radiates out. It radiates yeah. outward into the world. And, you know, sometimes we can have anger issues and we actually take them out on other people. And, yeah, and I've I want actually to, become I want to, aware of that. Yeah. yeah, and I'm going to talk about that as some of the things yes. that are that how we're showing up. So good. Yes. So um, so everyone says this sounds good, but Wendy, so we know we're okay. And because I would try to do something if everybody was saying the same thing. So Angela, thank you for that, and um, we'll chat a bit later. Yes. Um, Natalie sure. says, okay. So Natalie says this. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, we did. We did, because, and my red glasses and the anger in the red, um, because anger shows up as red. So, Natalie, that's very observant. So, thank you, Angela. Thank you so much for sharing just three ways. I know we could talk forever on that, but I, I want to make sure I get into three ways that we can peacefully find solutions for anger. So, yeah. thank you. Thank you. Okay. Pleasure. Thank you for having me on this show. Okay. Yeah, bye. bye. All right. So, yeah, we're both in red. All right, so Angela more or less said in a different way, some of the ways that I said. And, and here's why I wanted a, a different perspective with different words, but it's all the same thing. So she's dealing with past anger, and I talked about that as a toddler, as a, as a teen, and as an adult, the anger we feel about having been told, told by authorities, told by the social system, told by the parents or our caregivers, and then entering abusive relationships. So that is ongoing until we step out of that. And sometimes that takes quite a few years to heal and transcend that. And then there's the part of the anger from everyday frustration as an adult, not being able to do what we wanna do, go where we wanna go, say what we wanna say, be and do. And we enter into relationships, usually marriage and children and family. And when those start to fall apart, 
that's huge. That's huge. And then, of course, our new our freedoms, our restrictions, um, what's happening now worldwide. That's another source for anger. And I want to quickly talk about the financial side of us to be angry that that things are not only restricted in many other sense, but financially restricted. And I know we're, we're having shutdowns, we're having layoffs, we're having firings, we're having people walk off jobs, we're having money restricted because of our restrictions. Like, I say I can't go out and, and talk to people in public because I'm not allowed. And that's where I do my greatest work is talking to people in person. So that's been restricted. So there was some anger when it first started. And I said, what the hell? Why can't I go out and talk to people? This is where I need to be. This is my calling. This is my service to people. And I couldn't do that. So it's in every sector of our life. And we can tell. Here's one of the ways we can tell if we're angry all the time. Like constantly throughout the day, if you monitor it, you're getting triggered all the time. And you're stressed. And you're jumpy. And you feel like you're having a, a nervous system reorganization. You feel it. You feel your heart rate go up. You feel your blood pressure go up. That's on repressed anger and stress and frustration. So let's briefly talk about three ways. Oh, first I want to talk about what happens to you, to me, to everybody when we don't deal with this anger. It leads into health issues, big time health issues. Oh, what did I say a couple weeks ago? Stress is the number one killer and anger is about stress. Frustration is about stress and anger leads into big time health issues, relationship issues. <laughs> yep. All types of relationships are affected by stress and anger and your life, your life. It's like, where's my life gone? I, I'm a robot. I am a slave to the system and I'm not rewarded in any way. So there's anger about that. So three ways to deal with anger one of them is we need to let's just say release it and here's what i teach my clients to release anger releasing anger does not mean go kick the dog it does not mean go punch a hole in the wall it does not mean go shoot the bird out of the tree go you know something violent something harmful to anybody what happens when we hold in anger, it starts to affect our mental health and our physical health and emotional health as well. And it's wrecking havoc in the cells. It's wrecking havoc in every part of our body. It's killing us. So I recommend and suggest that people find a physical way to release anger. One of the ways, if you're restricted about how you can do it, is punch the bejeebers out of your pillow. Pile up a couple of pillows and just start punching hard. Punch, punch, punch. And while you're punching, I want to make sure that you scream bloody murder. You scream. You use curse words if you have to. And people say, well, I don't curse. Deep down in when you curse, you're releasing anger, guys. I'm not kidding you. People say, well, I'm not going to use foul language. Oh, come on. Everybody has used foul language or wanted to. When you get cut off in traffic, what do you first say? You so and so and so and so, right? Right out of your mouth. Very few of us go, oh, you're a blessed soul and I send light to you. I mean, I used to back 20 years ago before all this stuff started to happen. So being able to release the words, because what you're doing is releasing it in the moment. You're not setting a new timeline for that person. If you say you such and such and such and such a person and you did it did it did to me and I did it did it did you. You're only releasing it out of your system. You're not setting a new narrative, a new timeline in place. Ah, I like that, Wendy. <laughs> people, studies show people who curse of higher IQs. Well, I curse a lot. <laughs> and, I, and I don't call it cursing, I call it expression. So while you're punching the pillow, please, please, please shout anything you want to shout to pull it out of your system. They can't hear you. And they're not going to receive that energy because it's very short-lived. People will say, well, am I not projecting negative energy to them? It's very short-lived because it, it's you're not sitting there cursing them in a spell, right? You're not saying, I, you know, hate you and blah, 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 and da-da-da-da-da. What you're doing is saying you such and such and I don't want such and such and I need to get rid of. You're doing that called releasing. So there's one way, punching the pillow. The other way is getting in your car, going down a street or a road where there's really nobody around, and screaming your head off in the car, screaming your head off and do it. Scream everything you can think about about that situation. And once you release that emotional input, that physical energy out of your body, now comes the second way. 
And you know, not many people do the first way and you can't do the second and third until you do the first way. The second way is, is to understand. So let's understand it. Let's understand where it's come from. <laughs> Wendy says, I'm one smart cookie. Yep, then you are. So when you understand where the angers come from, if it's a righteous anger, you can say, okay, I accept where that's come from because that has happened to me and I have a right to be angry about it. And now I'm going to choose otherwise because I've released it. Or another acceptance is, listen, this happened in the past. I have been to healing sessions. I've been to therapy. I understand that it happened in the past. I'm not bringing my past to the present anymore, which then creates your future. I'm going to let it go now. So I ex release it physically. And then I understand why it happened. And then the third way, acceptance. Acceptance. Okay, so I'm a human being. Things piss me off. The world is not the way I wanted it to be or it was supposed to be. And things disappointed me and, and everything has come down on me. I've lost everything, my home, my pets, my parents, my friends, my income, my spouses, my, my restrictions, my freedoms, my money. You know? Hmm? Yeah. Then we can learn to accept things because we're going to change our narrative. We're going to change our timeline. We're going to change the way we step forward. So three things, three things is to release it, then understand it. It's hard to understand when you haven't released. You can't sit there where you're just like, oh, I have to understand this. No, release it. Release the physical aspect of it. And while you're screaming and yelling, you're releasing the emotional too. Then you understand where it's come from. And then you can begin to accept it. So I hope that helped. Does that make sense to you guys? Like, does that sort of fit how and some people don't release it some people just go oh i forgive the person and i just accept it and i move on and i'm always happy and you know life goes on and i've just forgotten about it i think when we have that attitude when we get triggered the anger comes out even more and we see so much anger out there today so much anger so much frustration so much stress so i hoped that helped I hope that helped. Now, there's two free ebooks in the comments. I think they're pinned to the top. I think um, my moderator pinned them to the top about affirm some affirmations to help you. I find when I affirm things, it helps me. It helps me mentally and emotionally come into alignment. And then we have what I call the breathe one. <sighs> breathe. Breathing in times of chaos how this can be your lifeline breathing. So please get those eBooks for yourself. Enjoy them. I look forward to next week and our new topic. I'm not going to let you know what that is yet because I haven't decided. And I tell you that because I intuitively do these things. I mean, this anger one was so perfect and I may continue. I may continue with this anger one because it is so prevalent. Natalie says, yes, it helps so much. Good. So remember, the three things I'm going to leave you with is to get it out of the physical body. And there's many ways to release it out of the physical body. I mean, you could go climb a tree and jump in a, in a lifeline down, not a lifeline, but you know what I mean, a bungee cord down from it while you're screaming at the top of your lungs too. You find a way to release that anger. There's many different ways. Screaming in a car on an abandoned road is, is a good one. And punching your pillow is an easy one because you can stay at home. Just make sure your kids aren't around. Or anybody else can hear you because they may call 911 on you. <laughs> All right. So, okay. Releasing, accepting, and understand, or understanding why it's there and what, what you've had to do to deal with it. And then the acceptance part of it. So I hope that helped. Get your free ebook. Stay tuned for next week. Put it on your calendar because every week at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time here on living well in all areas of your life, I'm here. Make sure you grab all the other bonus stuff from the website and probably tune in for my daily reading of Life of Awareness from Don Miguel Ruiz, where I pull a card and I will answer your questions intuitively. If you've got questions about your life, make sure you tune in randomly, usually around two o'clock every day, Eastern Standard Time, I will do that for you. So until then, thank Angela, thank Wendy, thank Mary, thank Natalie for being here. Thank you guys. Have an awesome day. Let go of your anger and realize that you do have anger. Everybody has anger. It's a natural human occurrence. Live well, guys. Talk to you soon.